Hey everyone, um, welcome to the match review of Sheffield United 1, Manchester City 2, where City, we left it a bit late, but we managed to win the game, you know, with goals from Erling Haaland in the 63rd minute, and Rodri in the 88th minute to seal the deal for City. Um, but yeah, today I'm just going to be doing player ratings, man of the match, um, and all that, so, all that good stuff. Uh, but, you know, we'll dive straight into it, no point daily dying. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the Schwa Cancela stream we did last night. Um, it's a pretty fun one. And, you know, answered a lot of questions, so you know how it was. But, you know, dive straight into it. So, we'll start with Edison in goal. 6.5, didn't, didn't have to do much. You know, Sheffield had six shots and only two of them were on target. And on the goal, again, I I don't really fault him because it was sloppy from Kyle Walker, of course, and, you know, there's a deflection on the shot as well. I don't think there's much he can do on it, but in the end, I don't think he negatively impacted as Edison. And I do think Edison was kind of being obstructed by that player. Um, only a little bit, but still. So, yeah, I don't really think um, Edison is to blame for the goal, but he didn't have too much to do either. It's not like he was amazing. Um, we'll go to Josko Vardio. He had a decent game. He wasn't spectacular, but, you know, he was he was fine. He's pretty solid. Um, yeah, Josko Vardio, 7 out of 10. I think it, I think it justifies his performance. Um, I don't think he played phenomenal. I don't think he played bad. Um, you know, I think him and Jack Grealish, they kind of struggled communicating on that left-hand side a little bit, but, um, that's it, really. But, you know, decent performance from Josko Vardio, he's shown really good signs, fitting into the City 11 well. So, you know, Josko Vardio, brilliant, he's had a brilliant introduction to the club so far, hopefully he only keeps it up, um, you know. Um, but, you know, we'll go straight into our centre-backs now with Ruben Diaz, who, as you can see, I've given the highest out of the defenders. Um, I think a 7.5 justifies it, you know, he was great at the back, I don't think he made any mistakes whatsoever. Um, you know, just a really good bit of play, and, you know, that block he got as well was just incredible. You know, it shows that he really puts his body on the line, he'll do anything to stop goal going in. Unless it means, you know, snapping someone or handballing it. You know. You know what I mean. He will throw his body at anything. So, yeah, Ruben Diaz. A 6.5 out of 10. I th no, 7.5 out of 10, sorry. I think that is justifiable. I'd even maybe even push that to an 8, to be honest. He played really, really well. Go to Ake. Um, solid at the back, as he usually is, you know. There's never really anything um, wrong with Ake's big games at the moment. He was fine today. Um, yeah, didn't didn't really put a foot wrong from what I could tell. Um, from what I know, he wasn't to fault for the goal. Um, yeah, and he almost assisted Ruben Diaz for a goal as well. And he did get a goal. <laughs> He did get a goal, but it got called offside, didn't it? So, yeah, that was a shame, but it is what it is with Nathan Ake. It's a shame that it got disallowed, but it was the right decision, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Um, Rodri was offside. But, yeah, Nathan Ake, fine game um, today, and hopefully it just means he's going to keep it up. Kyle Walker, I've given him a 7. I really think he had a really good game yesterday. It's just because he made that really bad error. Um, the back, the back heel, really silly back heel from Kyle Walker, straight into that player, and it, you know, less than thirty seconds later they scored. So, um, other than that, I thought Kyle Walker had a good game. Um, good at switching the play, passing was fine. His crosses were a bit hit and miss, but you know, his one of his balls in found Foden which led to the goal and you could really see once he made that error he was so desperate to 
to fix it. You know, he was really helping going forward. Um, he had a key moment with the goal, um, didn't he? So, Kyle Walker, I thought he had a good game. It's it's just that one error, sadly, which drags him down a little bit. But other than that, Kyle Walker, fine performance. I think he's playing really well at the moment. Um, yeah, I think Kyle Walker's gonna. I think Kyle Walker's having a really good season so far. Now then, I'll go to Kovacic. Um, he wasn't phenomenal um, yesterday. You know, I still think he's um, not yesterday. Um, on Sunday, I still think the game he had against Sheffield was good. Um, obviously, I think Sevilla has been his best performance so far um, by a long, long way. But, you know, that's not to discredit that today's performance, because today was a fine performance by him. It's not like he did anything bad or anything like that. So, yeah, Kovacic, fine game. Um, played a nice ball to Erling Haaland, where he almost got an assist. Um, it's just good goalkeeping by Fodderingham. So, um Decent, decent game from Kovacic. He almost got his first goal contribution, and it's a shame that he didn't. So, yeah, good game from Kovacic. We will jump straight onto Rodri, who, if you couldn't tell already, is my man of the match. What a game he had yesterday. Um, he was so good. He, he always is. You know, he is just. He's the best CDM in the world, and, and he's he's gonna go down as one of the best CDMs. Um, in history, isn't it? You know, he's he is going to be. You know, he's how old is he? He's only twenty seven, right? Twenty seven? Is that right? Or is he twenty six? Might be twenty eight. But either way, he's got so much years in him. You know, if he's twenty seven, then he's at least got like potentially five more years in him. Um, which you know is just. It's so, that's so incredible um, for Sissy. And hopefully Sissy can just keep it up. Um, you know? But, um, yeah, Rodri, really, really, really good performance. His passing was immaculate yesterday. I think he only p misplaced like four. Four passes at the very most. I can't quite remember. The goal he scored was just brilliant. You could tell he was going for it yesterday. You know, he kept whacking those balls. Like, like, um, his career depended on it, so. You can tell that he, um, he wanted that screamer yesterday. Sorry guys, I'm just gonna turn... Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, but Rodri, really, really good um, performance yesterday. Like he normally does, to be honest. Um, he's so consistent, isn't he? Yeah, good game against Newcastle. Decent game against Sevilla. Good game against Burnley. Excellent game um, against Sheffield. He's just, he's just so good. Um, which is just amazing. You know... Rodri, Rodri really is, Rodri really is on fire, isn't he? Um, no, the song doesn't lie, does it? Um, well, do be about him, honestly. Like, I think if we had to play Calvin Phillips for one game, I'd get so worried because it's not Rodri. That's how I'm. That's how important I think Rodri is to the squad. I think he's so, so good. Like, I can't say how good he is, because that's how good he is, you know? But enough about Rodri. I will jump to Bernardo Silva, who, um, he had a decent game, you know, he's beating his man on him. That, you know, that left back had nightmares against him, didn't he? Bernardo was running into so much space. Um, 
didn't create um, too much. He tried, but he couldn't. Um, but Bernardo, obviously, he's just come back after not playing um, since the Burnley game, so he's bound to be a bit, bit rusty. So, you know, we'll come a bit of slack on his performance, you know, it's nothing to worry about, I'm sure. Bernardo Silva's gonna have better performances. And it's not like he performed bad yesterday, you know, and no Sunday, sorry. I'm getting confused. Um you know, he had a good game against Sheffield and he's only gonna get better. But, you know, we'll jump straight onto Julian Alvarez. Um he was he was just above average, you know, he wasn't great to be honest. He had an alright game. Um there's not really much to say on Julian's game. He had a really good chance just after Bogle's goal. I'm sorry about the birds guys, I can't do anything about it. He had a good chance right after Sheffield's goal and he skied it. Luckily we got another good chance after and Roger just pel belted it into the back of the net. Um, but yeah, Julian Alvarez, he had an alright game. It wasn't spectacular. It was just, it was just a bit average, to be honest. Um, it really was. So yeah, Julian Alvarez, he was okay. Um, really, six point five, mainly because we won. But he did do okay at times. You know, I don't think there was anything he could have done with any better with that shot against Fodderingham. I just think that was a good save. You know the one I'm on about, you know, where Harlan, like, hits it, but it deflects, and then he runs onto it, and he hits it, but the keeper saves it, so. Yeah, not a bad performance from Julian Alvarez, and we'll definitely see um, better from him soon. So, yeah, there's more to come from Julian. We'll go to Jack Grealish now, though, who, um, you know, he's getting a lot of slack recently. For the Sheffield game, not getting enough goal contributions and all that. But yesterday, no, Sunday, he got an assist. Um, you know, chipped one over uh, onto Erling Haaland's head, which he scored from, and then that fan jumped on Erling Haaland's back. Um, and Jack Grealish won us the penalty as well. Um, I know it wasn't his inten intention, but, you know, he tried to hit it back in, and it deflected off the defender's arm. Which one is a penalty? Um, so Jack Grealish, I thought he played relatively well. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think he played that bad. Um, yeah, just a good game from Jack Grealish for me. And I thought, I think he needs when he gets a goal contribution. It's only going to lift his confidence up, and so if we can get his confidence up, so back out wasn't you know, um, the second half of the season, really, then I think it's going to really help us, because Jack Grealish's second half of the season was good. Um, but, you know, we'll jump so straight on to Erling Haaland now, who, um, he had a decent game yesterday. He wasn't amazing, but he had a couple chances, which he didn't score from. He had a penalty, which he missed. He did score a header, which was a big goal for us. But... Um, it it drags him down a bit because Erling Haaland did miss a penalty, you know, and he just hit it so hard to the point where he knew the direction it was going in, but he probably just kind of took it for granted that it was going in. I'm not a penalty expert, but, you know. Decent game from Erling Haaland. Uh, sorry, my computer just changed a bit, but it's back to normal now. Um, I've realised what's happened, it's fine. Um, yeah, he missed the penalty, but he got a big goal, so... You know, the fact that he's getting a goal, at the very least, is the big thing for us. Um, it's what counts. It's three goals and three games for him, so he will not be complaining about that. You know, he's, he's tied at the top of the Premier League for goals with Solly March and Boemo and Taiwo Awaniwi. Um, so, you know, a good game from Erling Haaland. Well, it was a 
decent game from early Khan. He got the ball, the ball in the back of the net, which is what matters most. Don't think he could have done anything better on the Fodderingham um, chance, you know, where he went, ran in one on one um, and chipped it, but it was a good save by Fodderingham. Um, I don't think he could have done be better on that. I just think Fodderingham read it really, really well and closed Erling Haaland down really well. So, um, fine game from Erling Haaland. I'm not too bothered. Um, big thing is they got a goal and he helped us get the win. And some stats for you. Uh, oh wait, no, we still got one more player to go through, which is probably a big talking point uh, off the past couple of games, and it is Phil Foden. Uh, what a game! Uh, honestly, you know, he came on for. He came on in like the eighty sixth minute, eighty fifth minute. It was right after Boggle scored. Anyway, he created two chances off the top of my head, and one of them we got a goal from, and the other one. Um, Julian Alvarez skied so Phil Foden he is just he's a generational talent and if he can keep playing how he's playing um, then he's going to be phenomenal for us and it's a shame that he couldn't play this game because he was, wasn't feeling well but the only way Phil Foden's up and I think the fact that Kevin De Bruyne being injured might give Phil Foden a new lease of life um, in this city team, in that midfield, you know he he could really be a giant player for us this season. Will Foden, he's had two assists so far. Hopefully, it's just going to go up. Um, but yeah, that's it for the player ratings. So, a couple of stats for you now. Going to try and implement stats into the game and all that. Um, you know, just to make make these match reviews a bit more. Uh, get them, get a bit more content in them every time. So, City had thirty shots um, against Sheffield, and nine of them were on target to Sheffield's six shots, two on target. Um, so you know, we dominated in terms of chances. It's just Sheffield got on the ball late on in the game because they needed to push for a goal. They got their goal, but then we hit right back. So, yeah, in that regard, Sissy um, um, dominated in the shots department. Then we'll jump on to... We'll jump on to possession because this is... I know Sissy are a dominating possession team, but this is just ridiculous. Sheffield United had 20% possession to Sissy's 80, which is just wild. Um, they were dominated when it came to when it came to controlling the ball. Um, absolutely dominated. You know, I know we tend to dominate, but I didn't expect that. Um, you could tell that Sheffield were playing for a draw, couldn't you? You know, Sheffield were not playing to win. They were playing for a draw. And they almost got their draw, but Rodri um, ruined the party. So, you know, and also Sheffield had 194 passes. We had 742. Sheffield had 68% pass accuracy. We had 92% pass accuracy. You know, that is just wild. Um, 11 fouls by Sheffield United to our two. They had four cards, we had none. We had two offsides, one of them led to a goal, so they're one offside. And we had 12 corners to their one. So it was pure domination from City yesterday. Um, it was just about it's just about getting the goals and we managed to get them you know we're gonna f we're gonna play games like this where it's gonna be cagey it's gonna be tight and teams will not play to win they'll play to get a point because in the end a point for Sheffield United could be could be what saves them in some scenarios but our next game is against Fulham at home three o'clock kickoff on Saturday. September 2nd. I really hope you guys can comment on this video because you usually can't, but you know, hopefully you can on this one. But guys, thanks an absolute ton for watching. Um, 
you know, I'm trying to make these match reviews a bit longer every time, so if you've got any tips, if you can comment on this, if you've got any tips to manage and to make me be able to um, um, make these videos a bit longer, you know, to give you guys a bit more content to listen into, then do give us do give it a shout because I will read your comments and I will respond. I always do. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for absolute time for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I will see you guys in the next one.